Hey guys, it's Jen. And it's Aaron. And we're the Misadventures of Team AJ. Yes, we are. And we're up to something I'm really cool. We are actually at the home of Mr. Elvis Aaron Presley. We are at the entrance of Graceland. We are here actually for two reasons. Uh, we're celebrating my dad's birthday. Um, so my father was supposed to be here, but he couldn't. Um, something came up last minute, so we're gonna meet him in Nashville today. We're about three and a half hours away from Nashville, but we wanted to give my dad a big happy birthday. Dad, we're so glad we get to spend your birthday here and see you. So I know you can't be here on the tour today, which you did buy your tickets for, but we're gonna bring that to you. So they're also celebrating this year here at Graceland Elvis' 45th anniversary of his death. So we are gonna bring you a great time. Hopefully you will enjoy this video if you're big Elvis fans. We are going on the VIP tour, so we have a tour guide. So you guys are gonna love it. Come along with us, have a good time. Dad, we love you, happy birthday. Hope you enjoy this video. This one's dedicated to you. Yes, and Jen has been here. Mm -hmm. Also, yes, another fact, I've been here as a teenager. Um, my family lived in Tennessee and Nashville. We came here, and so I haven't been here in over 30 years, guys. It is so different, they've expanded. There's a hotel across the street. We're gonna show you two, like I can't wait. It's been such a long time since I've been here. I'm looking forward to a great tour mm -hmm. and to see Graceland, because I did it as a kid and now I'm here as an adult. So come um, along with us, let's have a good time. So they got like a shake place here with candy and cream called Mini Maze. Yeah, this is definitely know. not here, guys. That's the gift shop see. over there. Yeah, yeah you're dating yourself. Mm -hmm. 30 yeah. years ago, it wasn't a complex. Yeah, this is, they got parking now. They have a new hotel. They have vendors and restaurants on the property. I mean, this is totally different from 30 years ago. It's almost like you feel like going into a theme park or something. It, it is, you feel like you're going to a theme park. If you've ever been to Hershey Park, it has a, the old Hershey Park yeah. entrance. The new one, I haven't been there yet. So we're going to ticketing to go confirm our tickets. And we're going to be on a tour bus, so that's really cool. They're going to bring us over to the property. Mm -hmm. And we can't wait, because this is totally different from 30 years ago. So, and my father has been here um, a couple years ago uh, with his sister, my aunt. And they had a great time. And they took some great pictures. So now we're going to take some great videos. We are now in the gift shop, and it is Elvis Heaven, I guess. I'm talking about Elvis 45th because this is the 45th anniversary of his death. And you can see here, there is all types of TCB taking care of business. That was his logo. That was his motto. They got everything from t-shirts for adults to more female focused t-shirts. And then they even have onesies for kids. Five guitars. How much were the guitars? 360 plus tax. 360 plus tax for the guitars. You're gonna be all shook up that way. Now they have cups here. They got the mugs and the turbulence tumblers and stuff. And more traditional Graceland Elvis Presley merch. That's not based on the 45th. <laughs> they got throw blankets for $20. That's not bad for $20. More mugs. You can even get your own Graceland snow globe. So guys, we just met our tour guide. She's amazing, so nice, so sweet. We can't wait to be on this tour. So we just got our meal voucher passes, included in the VIP tour is also a meal. So we got our passes, and then we also got our passes for Graceland. So we're ready to go. Uh, we're gonna start the tour in a couple minutes. Uh, we're so excited. I've been here 30 years ago. Aaron's never been here, so he's excited to really see this. He wanted to see Graceland. So again, Dad, happy birthday. This tour is for you. Sorry you couldn't be here, but we're gonna see you in Nashville in a little bit. Uh-huh. 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 All shook up. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm all shook up. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So guys, we are excited. We have an amazing tour guide. So guys, we're going to the shuttle. They also gave us some headphones and a little receiver so we can hear her better on the tour. We're excited. Let's go. We're getting on our Elvis shuttle. When you're on the tour, you get a personal shuttle. What a beautiful shuttle driver right there. And there we go. See? Personal shuttle. That's when you ball them, right? We're more like falling here. Uh, balling. But hey, the personal shuttle. 
We're going to give you a quick view of the shuttle and then we're turning you off and there we go. The worst place to play hooky is at Graceland. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, everyone knows me. All I did was go down to the front gate so my grandma I had an auntie who was coming in for town and of course, you know, if you have relatives, you gotta show them around the place. And I wasn't supposed to be at work that day, but of course, I'm down at the front gates. And this woman right here rolls down her window, hey! <laughs> Like, hey, y'all, I'm not supposed to know I'm here. <laughs> so, yeah. So, y'all, let me reintroduce myself. My name is Kristen. I've been a part of the archives department here at Graceland for going on six years now. Nice. So, yeah, you got, like, the best person to kind of tell you about Elvis at this point. I get the pleasure of actually walking through, like, the house and going through, like, the drawers that are closed off or the doors that are still away. Wow. Wow. I, I even get to work inside our warehouses. So, I get to pull, like, all the documents, all the bills, all the receipts. So I can give you as many Elvis secrets as I know now within my six years. Of course, there are people who've been here longer than me, and of course, they pass down um, stories. I'll even point out some of those people for you if you see them on tour, and that way you know when you're not with me, of course, you know you there are other people around who can simply ask you questions. Now, y'all are going to be with me for about two to three hours. Y'all have no idea what you signed up for, of course. <laughs> um, the best, the best. <laughs> right. Um, but we're going to spend the majority of our time here at the house, all right? And we're going to walk through at a guided pace. Once we get finished with our locations at the house, we even have special locations that only ultimate VIPs get to go to. Yes. So that's how we're going to end our tour of the mansion once we head to that undisclosed location. Wow. And then we're going to head across the streets to the plaza and I'm going to point out some of my favorite locations, like how to see the cars, how to see the jumpsuits. I'm going to go give you tips on how to like conquer that whole space. Because that's a whole nother tour. And that is all self-guided, unfortunately. I wish I could stay with y'all for another extra three hours. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, so that's why y'all pay for that ultimate VIP badge. That way you can go in and out of the plaza as many times as you like today. Y'all can even come back up to the house later on if you want to. And I'll even tell you how to do that detail as well. And y'all notice that we skipped those ones? <laughs> so do the same thing when you're right without me. Just flash that badge. We don't ask any questions, all right? <laughs> Okay. So everything closes based on our last guest. I'll give you some more details about that later on because it's easier to tell you when we're headed across the street and you get it there, all right? So don't worry about that yet. But y'all, welcome to Graceland. Yeah. Here we are. The famous Gates of Graceland. Famous Gates of Graceland. So y'all, we are now currently on Graceland property. This is 13.8 acres of land, all enclosed inside a stall. Yeah. 13 point acres of land, all enclosed inside a stone wall, and the house on top of the hill here. Elvis had purchased for a little bit over $102,000 oh, by the God. age of 22, just to let you know. $106,000. Yeah. Look at this house here. Wow. Now, when Elvis purchased this house, it was 10,000 square feet at the time. It's now currently over 17,000 square feet with all the additions wow. that he made. And I'm going to show you how he added on just by this first room we're heading into. Y'all ready? Thank you. I know it doesn't look like much here, but I'm going to show you inside here, okay? This is the room where Elvis's father stayed after Elvis's death. He took over this room to help manage the property. This room here is also only accessed by the people on the Ultimate VIP Tour. This room has all types of artifacts from Elvis, from his golden bracelets to his golden guns, along with some cop badges as well. So please look around and you may see something you would want to bring home with you, even though you can't because it's Graceland property. Before we go any further, I must explain that only pictures can be taken in the house. There is not any video allowed, period. So, with that said, we will give you the best experience we possibly can with these pictures and show you everything, almost everything, you can see at Elvis's Graceland. Sometimes we like to keep the keys in condition so that way whenever he drove off, he could drive out of Graceland in an instant. And there are actually two ways to get inside of Graceland. Did you know that? Yeah. Of course, there's the obvious entrance through the gates, 
But right back there, there's a little secret location that leads you around the corner on through this forest area over to my left here and leads on around our old corporate office. Now, Elvis would actually pay rent to that building. It used to be a church. And they used to pay rent to that church so that way he could drive on off without anybody seeing him leave Graceland property. Yeah. He'd even go to the extent of dressing in disguise by putting on a baseball cat and some shades. That's a great disguise, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nobody knew it was Elvis. Even one time he drove an old pickup truck and it broke down on the side of the road. Still in that disguise. Nobody stopped to help Elvis at all. Well, I know. Would you have stopped to help Elvis, you think? Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he might have just let you drive away with a Cadillac at that point. Yeah, So we're going to take some pictures also, she's the tour guide's also going to be a professional photographer and we're going to get some pictures with no one in the background as we're through that throughout the houses, that's going to be awesome. This house was built in 1939. So I've watched a lot of Elvis movies, watched a lot about Elvis growing up and every time I look at this house I always picture him coming in his car, his Cadillac, whatever he had, he was driving and just pulling up to the front and going in. I've seen that over the years so many times and it's amazing. It's awesome just to be here and see this. So we're gonna walk through this house. We're gonna walk through 20 years of Elvis living here, all right? Let's go on all this type of stuff we have here today. Everything that we're gonna see today is gonna be archives and you will not believe me at all, all right? Come on around. Now, there will be some areas that we won't see, so I'm going to go ahead and show you all that in a way that I can. The upstairs. We're not going to go upstairs, y'all. That's just left off limits out of respect for the family and out of respect for Elvis. Even when Elvis is alive, he will only allow certain people to go upstairs. So since he's not around to get that request, we personally can't go through. Y'all going back through the house again? Come on in. Thank you. Yeah, you better walk in like your own place. Oh, there you go. Yeah. little side note right there okay notice that they were wearing lanyards those are our vips you all are ultimate vips y'all get that same access as well now they have self-guided tours they're walking around with an ipad they got john stamos in their ears i know i'm a little bit better than john stamos <laughs> uh, no need to brag um but y'all when y'all get finished with me when y'all go back across the street when i drop y'all off on at the, on the other side y'all are more than welcome to take any of these shuttles that bring you back up to the house and go through back through that house that front door and i'm serious when i say walk in like you're on the place when you see those layers you don't say anything but we're gonna keep on shuttling those shuttles we stop our shuttle system at four o'clock that's the last shuttle that comes up but we'll keep on bringing those shuttles up until we find you hiding behind the curtain somewhere <laughs> and bring it back down, all right? Now, upstairs area, I will talk about more when we get on the inside, but let me go ahead and tell you about Elvis' bedroom because a lot of people, they wonder where it is before we even step inside. Elvis' bedroom will be two windows up here to the right. It's so exactly the same way as Elvis left it. That's just out of the wishes for the family. Since Lisa Marie, his daughter, owns this house, she gives us that permission that we need to go upstairs and we need to clean everything and let three employees out of the hundreds of employees go upstairs, all right? Now, that, and I'm not one of them before you ask. <laughs> now, it brings you on over to his bathroom suite, which will be right above the foyer area. And right up over here, these two windows, same size as Elvis' bedroom, by the way. That's his closet. Wow. Yeah. So this entire section with all the to Elvis here. Yeah. Here we go. So I'll mention more about the upstairs when we get on inside, but I at least want to point out that area for you. You ready to step back into time? <laughs> all right, we're going to go in to the living room first, all right? Welcome to Grayson. It was at this point that we had to stop filming. In the next set of pictures here, we are going to be showing you the living room, the dining room, the staircase, and his mother and father's bedroom from when they lived there with Elvis. As our tour guy said before, no one is allowed upstairs. Even when Elvis was alive, he didn't allow many people upstairs. It was mainly just his family and certain close, close friends. And they respect his wishes to this day. 
please enjoy these shots, and we will be back with you shortly. As you see here, everything here was actually not like it was in the 70s. This was actually renovated to look like it was in the 60s. So take a look at all this wonderful architecture and realize that this is classic beyond the tears. Looking at this picture, you'll see just how private Elvis was. That is a wall that blocks you from being able to see into the upstairs area where you normally have a balcony. He did not want anyone to be able to see upstairs into his room, into his bathroom, or anything. So he had it all blocked off. We are now looking at the bedroom that was for Elvis's parents, Vernon and Gladys. Now we are in the kitchen for Graceland. If you just look at the pictures, you can see how well maintained the electronics, the flooring, the cabinets are. And let me tell you something. You will also see a secret staircase where Elvis would sneak down and get food in the middle of the night. Also, it was the way his servants will bring up food to him inside his bedroom. Now you're looking at a sneak peek of the jungle room. We will see this thing later. Trust me, it's awesome. We are now heading into the basement. The basement has a couple of fun game rooms slash entertainment rooms, as you'll see in these upcoming pictures. We are heading into the TV room, which has a bar and a projector along with three TV sets so he can watch whatever from across the country or all three stations at the time. And remember, this was during a time where cable television hasn't spread across the country yet. And satellite TV was still a big giant dish in your backyard. Also, you'll see that the decor is kept the same as it was when he was living there. This is the pool room, and as you see, the ceiling, the walls, and the furniture were all upholstered with the same material. Imagine how much it would have cost when he had it done, let alone now. So this is crazy. It, it's just mind-blowing at how much attention to detail it took to make this happen. Now we're probably in the most famous room of the Elvis Graceland Estate. This is the jungle room. This is where you see the pictures online of Lisa Marie sitting with the teddy bear. This is where you would see Elvis playing the guitar. And quite frankly, this is the room for a lot of people that defines the Graceland experience. Also in this room, Elvis had a lot of famous people play here. And he would watch from the tiki bar in the corner underneath the stairs.
also Elvis's aunt still lived here until 1993. She used to come out and hang out even with tours going on. Tours started in 1982. So she was here for a long time when tours started. So that's another really cool fact that she, he still had a living family member living here. So that's awesome. So guys, um, we're about to go in Vernon's office. We have to shut it down when we go in Vernon's office, but we're just showing you the outside coming off from the back of the house. We have Lisa Marie's swing set. Um, as she said earlier, the family still comes here, still hangs out in the house. Lisa Marie still hangs out and sleeps in her bedroom. Uh, they have dinners uh, for the holidays at the dining room table. They will close down the museum two days out of the year. There are days that Lisa and Priscilla may be here with the family. You never know when they're gonna show up. They come come here at any time and say hi. So it's amazing. They're still a big part of this house. So let's go check the rest of this out. Here are some shots of the swing set that Jen was referring to. There's a story behind this swing set that we will be telling later on. So keep watching for that story. Now we are inside Vernon's office. This was Elvis' father's office, who was also his business manager at the time. So this is where he would work at. This is where they would answer all the fan mail as well. This was a very busy operation, as Elvis's business operations were all ran out of here. This sign shows how no-nonsense Mr. Vernon was. Just read it. It's crazy. This is the smokehouse, and inside the smokehouse, there's actually a small replica of Elvis's birthplace, as you see in the pictures here. And this plaque here tells you more about where he was from and the very small shotgun house that he lived in. Along with that, the plaque also explains that his family moved from Tupelo, Mississippi, where they were dirt poor, to Memphis, Tennessee to try to find better opportunities to succeed in life. Now we are at the far end of the smokehouse. At this smokehouse, Elvis's father, Vernon, actually smoked meat. Also, Elvis would actually do target practice from the balcony of the house in through the, a door going into this part of the smokehouse. In some of the shots, you will see just blank floor or blank ceiling. That's actually showing the bullet holes that Elvis put into the floor and the ceiling from his shots. In the next couple of pictures and the video coming up ahead, you will see the balcony that Elvis was shooting from. That's a long shot. And for him to even hit the target once or twice means he was a decent shot. There was one bullet hole that we yep. passed by and we didn't oh, know. Oh, I saw wow. that. Mm -hmm. What you think that was? Where it's there? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's a bullet hole right there. The slide's got a bullet hole wow. in it. Now, the slide was a little bit more over to the right side of Vernon's office mm -hmm. here where that door ended. Um, but still, I feel bad for poor Vernon. Again, he's following away taxes right next door. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Get shot at those one slides. stray bullet. <laughs> I think that's what he was really aiming for. <laughs> 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 making sure that everything was right. Right, exactly. Yeah. Making sure you know not to mess up. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so you used to stand right up there and just shoot. And huh? shoot on through. Y'all think y'all can hit that shot? Uh, I don't know about no? that. No? This one can? All right, she pointed you out. I was about to say, I think oh, I could hit that yeah. shot. Uh, it's about a 40 yard shot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, all right. If you, you know, if you, if you shoot <laughs> regularly, yeah. <laughs> I already grew up at the age of eight shooting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, yeah, Elvis would do practice range down here and. Here we have a pasture area. All this would normally have horses out here. He'd have at least 20 to 30 horses at some point. But in fact, he had so many horses that he didn't have them all here at one point. He bought out another ranch out in, um, close around Walls, Mississippi called Circle G Ranch. Huh. And he went and had his horses all there. He only had that ranch for about a year or so until he sold it off and brought some of his favorite horses back here. And they all spent time in the barn in the background. House of the Rising Sun. Uh, now that uh, barn was already here when Elvis purchased the house. The stables were built by the Moors, and they even put air conditioning in the stables because they had a prize pool they wanted to keep frisky. <laughs> uh, but of course, now we do have horses here on the property. We have at least three of them. 
Um, their names are Tucker, Duke, and Bandit. And they have free range around the property here. So they may be up front. And when we get around to the front, we may be able to see them and I'll point them out better for you. But if you ever see a blonde golden palomino right out here, you better stop and take a picture of him. He's our diva of the bunch. His name uh -oh. is Tucker, full Tucker. name Tuscan Sun. Nice. Um, the Elvis had a uh, horse named Rising Sun, who was also called a Palomino. So oh. we're still keeping with that trend. But Tucker yeah, thinks that he is Rising Sun. <laughs> 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 so he'll stand out here and have his going with the wind moment, of course. Mm -hmm. And by the way, you can write to the horses. They do receive fan mail. Right. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'll be sure to point out their fan mail box for y'all later on too, all right? Yeah. Y'all ready to step into the air conditioning? I would yeah. love to yeah. see that horse. Uh, yeah, me too. I, I know. Oh, I'm a horse freak. We were talking. We were heading towards the. Yeah, I had a horse. I used to ride. Yeah. You did? Not a thoroughbred. Prince Charming was his name. Prince Charming. Prince Charming. Did you take care of that horse? I did. He was at a stable though. I had a. I, I'm from Long Island. Uh huh. Um. So, uh, Eastport, Manorville. Uh -huh. So a friend of mine had a indoor arena and a barn, yeah. and that's where I boarded him. Oh, that's so yeah. sweet. Prince Charming. Prince Charming. But now I got my real Prince Charming. There you go. <laughs> uh, my husband. Come on, y'all. Now we are going into what is called the trophy room. The trophy room has the first section that you're seeing here that has pictures of Elvis's family, his mother, his father, his grandparents. Also, you learn about you learn about Elvis having a twin brother that died in the womb, along with seeing other artifacts like Elvis's first bike a family tree amongst pictures of the old shotgun house with a treasure trove of other artifacts dealing with Elvis's early childhood. This area also shows some of the early years of Elvis starting his career. Some of the pictures here are also showing Elvis and Priscilla early on in their lives as a couple, along with Lisa Marie. Elvis gave a lot of money to the people of Memphis, Tennessee, so much so that the city recognized him hundreds of times for the amount of effort physically, mentally, and financially he has given towards the city of Memphis. Also, you will see some of the receipts and some of the checks that were written for the furniture in Elvis's Graceland. I mention this because Elvis didn't actually write any checks himself. Normally, his father did. The only time Elvis would write a check is to charity, and mainly St. Jude's in Memphis. That is a hospital that is dedicated to saving children with cancer and other pediatric dangerous diseases. For Elvis, the cause of St. Jude was one that was near and dear to his heart, and he supported that cause every day of his life. And the reason St. Jude is so close to my heart is because I had a nephew at the age of 11 that had leukemia and his leukemia was a very rare type and they sent him to St. Jude from Louisiana and St. Jude saved his life. So we at Team AJ would love to say thank you to St. Jude. So let's follow Elvis's example and donate to the cause of St. Jude as well. You will also see things like sketches and floor plans here for the renovation and improvement of Graceland.
in this next corridor that we're going down, there's everything from art, like Kincaid's and other artists, along with furniture from the old Graceland when it was changed to its red period, along with the normal furniture that was there. We are speaking of everything from TVs that was given to Elvis from RCA to Lisa Marie's crib and baby bassinet, along with Elvis's work desk. Just the sheer amount of artifacts they have here is amazing. And let me tell you something. Graceland is truly a tribute to Elvis and his legacy like no other artist in this world has. And Team AJ is truly grateful to be able to go on this VIP Ultimate Tour to learn more about one of the most influential artists of all time. This furniture here is from the house's red period that I mentioned before. This was after the divorce from Priscilla and at this time he was dating Ginger Alden. And Graceland was decorated to be more contemporary for the times of the 70s. Don't mind Aaron in the reflection. For those who don't know, Elvis was an avid gun collector. So, so between the story of him shooting from his balcony into the smokehouse and the sheer amount of guns you see him either with or in the collection here at Graceland, you know for a fact that man loved his weapons. As you see here. This painting has a light that shines on it to make it so you can't really get a good picture of it. I think I did a decent job though. Tell me what you think in the comments below about the job that I did getting this shot. The swimming pool here, this is what, what like I said, Elvis had purchased this pool for a little bit over $8,000. He had fun jumping in this pool, diving in this pool. Of course, there were a couple of attempts that were failed uh, a little bit. But I'm going to tell you, this pool goes down to seven feet. Seven feet, guys. Seven feet. feet. Now, of course, the persons can still use the pool still now if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, they'll come here around the winter times or like late in August and if they do come here when we're not closed down on tours again that's after hours so I'm not here to personally say what they do after hours yeah. of course but I would imagine refreshing off in this nice cool pool would be great it stays in Graceland <laughs> what happens in Graceland stays, stays in Graceland, in Graceland. Yeah. Yeah. are we going to create a new motto we're almost like Vegas yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love the flowers our tour guide is amazing. Thank you so much. You are doing an amazing job. It's been so many years since I've been here, and it's just, it's awesome. It's good to be back and see it. Now we are in the racquetball building. This is where Elvis actually had his last activity before he passed on. He, in the middle of the night, actually called his cousin, Billy Smith, 
and Billy Smith's wife to actually come play racquetball with his girlfriend, Ginger Alden, and himself. Elvis loved racquetball so much, actually, that he had a whole building built for it in the backyard of his house. So he could leave the main house and go play racquetball whenever he desired. He even had a racquetball racket that was referred to as the red guitar because it actually had a red guitar painted inside the strings of the racket. And as you see here, this is one of the rackets that was played with at that time. Another fact about this racquetball building is that fans flock from everywhere to come see this building. The reason for that is this is the place where Elvis played his last two songs. The songs were Unchained Melody and Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain on the piano that is shown in these images. On the left hand side of the image you will see flowers. Those flowers are real flowers that are left by fans. The fans leave the flowers here in remembrance of Mr. Presley. So in honor of Mr. Presley, we will play a little bit of both songs that were played at this piano right before Mr. Presley passed on. Oh, my love, my darling. In the twilight, oh, I see. That's an Airbnb, guys. You can rent, but they're sold out for Elvis week. It's an Airbnb? Yes, that house right there is an Airbnb. Oh. So you can rent the house and then walk to Graceland. Nice. Or be in the um, gazebo and watch Graceland. It's awesome. It's sold out for Elvis week. I saw the wall too. Yeah. Now, mm. both of these items were located in Forest Hill Cemetery originally, and that's where Gladys was originally buried. Elvis's plan was to be buried where his mom was buried at Forest Hill. Mm. Elvis was placed there shortly after his passing on August 16, 1977. But Vernon, who was alive at the time, felt it wasn't the safest place for Elvis to be. Mm -hmm. So he petitioned through the city of Memphis to have Elvis and Gladys move here to the property. And this is where they currently lay to rest. Mm -hmm. They were moved here in October 1977. Now, while Elvis is buried here, we have Gladys right next to her in front. I remember I already mentioned about Chester. That's just a more For this part, we were very quiet because we wanted to show the proper respect for these people who this is their final resting place. And as such, we want to show the utmost respect for Mr. Presley and his family who are resting here in their eternal slumber.
So guys, we just left the meditation garden. We paid our respects. It's a beautiful there. It's so beautiful there. Um, we're actually showing you right now the pastures. Every time I look at this, I see, I used to see all the videos of Elvis and Priscilla riding their horses. And this is where they used to ride them. So when you see those videos, that's the first thing that comes into mind when you're here. You're picturing them like they were in the videos, just riding the horses because they love, Elvis loved his horses. As you know, there's still horses on the property. So that's what it reminds me of. And also, they used to take their golf carts and they used to ride all around the property. You see a lot of videos of that. Actually with Lisa, Elvis, and uh, Priscilla, the three of them used to go riding. And mind you, they still use this pool to this day here. So when Lisa Marie is here, she'll use the pool at after hours and because they literally come here to stay here at times. So we want to thank you. You have been amazing. You are amazing Top notch. tour guide. I mean, hey. I want to be like you I, when I grow up. Yeah. Like tour guide. I came here with my family over 30 years ago. So this is really different. Uh, they've added a lot. Uh -huh. you know, everything, the parking across the street, everything here is pretty much the same. It's just, it's gotten so much bigger, expanded. Yeah. And it's awesome. It's, it's amazing how the beauty to keep up with this. So we want to Graceland, yeah. the Presley family, for allowing us here to film. Of course, we couldn't film inside. Yeah. But Thank we're going to do some pictures for you guys. She's been amazing. How did you get involved in that? Oh, I just put in an application. That's wow. easy. Wow. <laughs> and so <laughs> how long did it take you to learn, or were you an Elvis fan to begin with? Yeah, I was an Elvis fan prior to. Okay. I don't know if you spotted a couple of my Lilo and Stitch fans. Oh, that's okay. what I was looking at. Yeah, yeah. For the honest, I've been looking at the whole time. People okay. may think I'm a perv because I'm looking at <laughs> yeah. the brows yeah. looking. But yeah, but, I, okay. I put them there because I started off as Leo and Stitch fan. And, and you course, know in the movie, hey, okay. there's a high whole okay. heap, a ton of Elvis references. Okay. A ton on, of huh? Elvis re references. So I grew up here in this okay. neighborhood my entire life okay. around Graceland. And of course, like hearing so much history about it and I know who the name Elvis Presley is. Mm -hmm. Why not come and work for this man and okay. see like the icon who is. Okay. And I personally love the job so much because I can literally stand in one location yeah. and I could talk to people from all around the world and see their views and see their okay. reactions just okay. from going out the house. It didn't take me too long to learn any of mm -hmm. this. It took me about two to three weeks. Wow. Just to get wow. the basic information. Wow. But still, I'm still ever learning. I'm still ever growing. And wow. I'm still getting more information. More I was about to say, we all learn every day with yeah. everything that we so do. Much. And I you like did a beautiful them. job. Thank you. Beautiful job. And we live in New Orleans. Okay. So we have a YouTube channel for Positive Vibes. King Creole. And New Orleans. Okay. And then we also have, supposedly, as they say, Elvis Presley filmed King Creole, which is one of his best movies. So we're excited to actually be here, and we also, at home, can bring some Elvis with us. There we go. So do you get to see the family often yeah, when they come they'll here? they'll come here as often okay. as they can. Of course, we try to give them space whenever they need to. Mm, for but they're still um, relevant here at the house. I think okay. that's a beautiful thing to still have it family is. interaction here. And she was telling us, which we couldn't film, we got a little film, they let us film a little bit as we went in the entrance, but then we had to turn off the cameras out of respect, you know, for the family and the, you know, the, the Graceland. But what she did say is the family does stay here often. Lisa will stay upstairs with her family, her children. Priscilla, does Priscilla stay here too? Mm -hmm. Priscilla will come here okay. as well. Okay. Um, she'll often stay at our new guest house at Graceland right now. Okay, next door. we're going to check that out. We're going to go over there and check that out. Yeah. Because uh, I've never seen, I think it's how many years? Five, six years it's old? It's been now? here since 2016. Okay, so. 2016. Yeah, so okay. not too long. Yeah. Okay, so about six years. Six years. Okay. I just want to say one thing before we close out. Every time I see uh, movies, because my family was big Elvis fans, I always see, especially when they do like the, the, the original movies of Elvis and Priscilla and Lisa riding around the golf carts on yeah. the lawn, and then him always being dropped off in front of the house. And he just, I always, when I watch the movies, that's the first thing that's in my head. Him coming, going into his house, and then playing around, riding the horses. I guess that's the pasture, right, that they yeah, used to the ride? Yeah, that's the pasture. That all you of see this on all the you videos. consider pasture. Yeah, well, you did an amazing job. We want to thank you. Yeah, thank uh, normally you. Normally, we end our channel with Let the Good Times Roll. 
but we're just gonna say thank you. Thank you for Graceland for having us. She's amazing. She was the best. Thank we you. Thank you, and we'll Thanks see you guys like back in New Orleans. Out. This is Kristen. Yes, Kristen. Kristen, so if you guys come here and do the VIP we tour. Kristen. Yes, you need to come see Kristen. She was amazing. She was a great tour guide. We learned so much, and we got to see a lot of things that we knew before, too, but you're definitely gonna learn when you come here. So thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye. Hope you enjoy. This should have been the end of the tour, and in normal cases, it would be, but because we went with the ultimate VIP experience at Graceland, you get to go to an extra building that has more artifacts and more awesome things to see. And we're going to bring that to you now. This room has pictures of his life all on the wall as wallpaper. You're also going to see this guitar right here. This guitar is special, but we'll get to that in a few minutes. Just keep on looking and we will give you a great time. Also, this was the actual piano that was in Elvis's house. This piano is actually being worked on at the moment, so they have it in this area. And that's what they do in this auxiliary room, is actually work on some of the artifacts that need repair. Right now, you're looking at a jacket that is sold in the gift shop. Also, they have a whole bunch of handkerchiefs that are from Elvis's last tour that he did not actually get to complete. As he passed on right before the tour started. Now we are putting on our special white gloves because something amazing is about to happen. And this is only accessible from the Ultimate VIP Tour. As part of the Ultimate VIP Tour, we actually get to touch Elvis's last guitar. The one he was going to take with him on the tour he was not able to complete because of his death. This is an amazing experience. One that... That makes the cost of this ultimate VIP experience worth it, especially if you're an Elvis fan like my wife is. And as you can see, we've had an amazing time doing these pictures. I'm being absolutely goofy and you'll see my wife be just as goofy in a minute. Now we are looking at more artifacts that they have separated. You'll see Elvis's police uniform. You'll see Elvis's motorcycle outfit. Also, you will see a very early, very, very early cell phone that was used in the 70s. Here is the classic cell phone that I was speaking of before. Look at this thing. It is crazy. Imagine your iPhone or your Android phone starting from something like this. That is the evolution of the technology right here. Where we went from James Bond suitcase, briefcase cell phones to now a phone that fits in your pocket that has a full screen on it that you can touch and tap. On this shelf, we have different artifacts from Elvis. We have his glasses, we have his driver's license, we have his police badge. We also have a couple of books that he was interested in. How Great Thou Art is one of them, and The Prophet by Khalil Gibran. Look at the rings and the jewelry. Isn't it gorgeous? I'm going to stretch this out for you guys so I can play How Great Thou Art, one of the best Elvis songs ever made. Just a little snippet, though. Oh, my God, how great thou art. It's another photo of Elvis's parents that he kept around. To me, the most amazing thing is how well this stuff has been preserved for generations and generations of generations of Elvis's fans can come and see this stuff, especially if you're on the Ultimate VIP Tour. Once again, we would like to thank you guys for watching, and also stay tuned for part two, which will show you the other side of Graceland, where they have this whole museum area with his old outfits, his old cars, his everything, his essence is there, and it's waiting for you when we release part two of Elvis's Graceland. Please stay tuned, and it's coming to you soon.